Good day learners. Today we are going to discuss lesson number 12. The topic is creditors ledger and for this you have to refer to page 198 and 199 of your textbook. Learners, I am going to discuss the format of the creditors ledger. Right. A creditors ledger must have the following details. There is an example provided to you at the bottom of your page in the resource pack, page number 12, learners. Okay, the name of the business as a heading. For this example, we have creditors ledger of Tweeny clothes. Can you see there? Then the next one, the name of the creditors. Remember, a business can have very many creditors and a creditors ledger number for each creditor. We use as a reference for later use. Here I have indicated C1, which means creditor number one. Then learners, we have a source document name and a number under the details column. Can you see here, this is your source document number, which we get out of the transaction. Then we have the dates on which the transaction between the business and the creditor occurred. This is to be recorded under the date column. This is the date column. The next, a reference for the journal in which the transaction was recorded. This is to be entered in the folio column. Can you see the folio column here? Okay, then we have a reference for the journal in which the transaction was recorded. Yes, again, it's the folio column, then the amount of the transaction. This amount we will acquire from the transaction given to us. An updated balance after each transaction so that the balance owed to the business is known immediately, which means after every transaction, we are going to effect the balance previous. We either add it or we either Minus it depends on the transaction and we return back to the balance column. And the last one note, a balance still owing to the creditor is brought down at the beginning of the month, month under the balance column. Can you see here? Okay, learners, let us now go to this activity which is provided to you, how to complete a creditor's ledger. My instruction is, Use the following transactions to complete the creditor's ledger of Bala Bing for Tweeny Clothes. The word for is missing. Tweeny Clothes for August 2019. Okay, learners. The other thing you need to remember, the creditor's ledger is opposite to the debtor's ledger. You need to remember that in the debtor's ledger, we always add in the debit column and we minus in the credit column. For the creditor's ledger, we're going to add in the credit column and minus in the debit column. This is how we do this. Right, August 2019, on the first, the balance owing to Balabing is 20, 27,450 Rand. So 2019, August 1st, I'm bringing down the balance. Balance BD is brought down 27,450 rand. Can you see in the balance column? The next transaction on the 9th, received invoice number 215 for goods purchased. Remember, invoice number 215. So I go to my creditor's ledger. I record the date is the 9th, invoice number 215. Now, learners, I have made a purchase. So when we make a purchase, we record in the creditor's journal. And how much did I purchase for? It's 5,550. Remember at the beginning, Bala Bing, uh, sorry. Yes, Bala Bing 
had a balance of 27,450. Then they made another purchase. Okay, Tweeney Clothes made another purchase from Bilabing for 5,550. So the amount owing to Bilabing now will be 33,000 Rand. It means 27,550 plus 5,550 will give you 33,000 Rand. Can you see that? The next one, on the 15th, issue check number 166 for 15,000 Rand towards payment of account. So, Twini Clothes decided to make a payment towards their account with check number 166 for the amount of 15,000 Rand. For that, that payment was recorded in the cash payments journal because money has left the business. So the amount of 33,000 Rand minus 15,000 Rand is now giving me 18,000 Rand. So that becomes my new balance. Okay, learners. So for some reason, Tweeney Clothes was unhappy about the damaged goods. So they decided to return that goods that were damaged worth 1,500 to Bilabing. And together with the goods for returning, they issued debit note number 45. We go to the creditor's ledger on the 22nd, debit note number 45. Remember, returns go in allowance journals. Just, have, just like we have completed the debtor's allowances journal for each debtor, now we are completing the creditor's allowance journal for our returns. So creditor's allowance journal, 1,500 in the debit column. You take your 18,000 Rand minus or less 1,500. My new amount is 16,500. Can you see that learners? So this is the creditor's ledger of Tweeney Clothes and for our creditor Balabi. Okay, so come to the end of the month, end of August, we can now see that Tweeney Clothes owe Balabing the amount of 16,500. What happens to this amount now, learners? Remember, as we brought down the balance on the 1st of August here, the balance brought down is 27,450. So for September, for the new month, September 1st, our new balance will be 16,500. Okay, learners. Now, now learners, some points to remember. You need to bring down the balance outstanding to the creditor in the balance column. Number two, whenever a business makes a credit purchase, his account, which is the amount owing to the creditor, increases. Similarly, like your parents, if they go to Edgar's and they make a credit purchase, their account is going to increase. Okay, therefore, we first enter the date of the transaction under the date column, then complete the details column with the information of the source document given to you in the transaction, then record the folio of the journal, that is where you are going to be posting from, then we enter the amount of the purchase under the credit column. And we add to the previous balance to record a new amount in the balance column. This new amount is now increasing from the previous balance. This is done every time we make a credit purchase. Remember the example I used to you for your parents going to Edgar's and making credit purchases. Every time they purchase on credit, their account increases. Now, when a business makes a payment towards that account, remember his account owing now is going to decrease. Remember when your parents decide to make a payment towards their Edgar's account, their balance outstanding is going to decrease. So for this, we enter the date, we enter the receipt number from the transaction under the column, under the details column, we enter the folio of the subsidiary journal, which is a CPJ in this case. 
where you record the payment of money, thereafter enter the amount in the debit column. Remember I told you, every time we, our account needs to decrease, we record in the debit column. It's the opposite, learners, to the debtor's ledger. Remember, the creditor's account reduces. Now, you subtract that amount you have entered from the previous balance to give you a new balance. Enter this new balance in the balance column. I hope you are trying to understand, and as it is a bit confusing, but just follow these little notes to remember and you will not have a problem. Okay, next point. When the business makes returns, his accounts decreases. Example again, when your parents are unhappy with their purchase, they go back to Edgar's and they want to return their products or their garments. And for that, his amount outstanding or your parents' amount outstanding is now going to decrease. Okay, we enter the detail, the date, we enter the debit note number from the transaction, then we enter the folio of the journal. That is in a creditor's allowances journal under the folio column. Now we enter the amount in the debit column. Remember, debit column will reduce the amount that is outstanding. Now we take the previous balance and subtract the amount that we return for and we effect a new balance in the balance column. The next point, the debit column decreases the creditor's balance. Okay, which means every time there's payments and returns being made, the account is going to reduce. The credit column increases the creditor's balance, which means every time we make a purchase, the account increases. Okay, learners, I have provided to you this activity here. This activity you are provided with Berlim Traders account in the creditors ledger of Euro Traders. Complete the missing details or the amounts A to G. Let's start. A. You have a blank activity in your resource pack that you can complete. Before I start off, because this is a creditors ledger, I am going to put a plus sign in bracket in the credit column, and I'll put a minus sign in the debit column. This assists me or helps me to understand each operation. Okay, let's start. Here I have a completed or an incomplete creditors ledger for which you have to provide the missing answers. Let's start. July 1st, we have balance brought forward is 5,000 rand. Then an invoice number, remember creditors, invoice number for A is a creditors journal. Can you see A? So CJ goes next to A for the amount of 7,500. This particular entry shows me that a credit purchase of 7,500 was made, okay, by Euro traders. Right, from creditors, Berlin traders, okay? So I'm gonna take 5,000 Rand, I plus 7,500, that's supposed to give me an amount of 12,500 Rand here, which is the answer for B. Can you see? There's your answer for B. So the next entry on the 15th, because I have an allowances journal, C A J. That tells me it's a debit note. For creditors, it's a debit note. And remember, for debtors ledger, it is a credit note. It's basically the opposite. Okay. So for C, I have to enter debit note number four. It's a C A J. Remember my amount of twelve thousand five hundred here under B. Minus 4,000 will give me 8,500. Okay, learners? So that transaction is completed. 
Let's look at the one on the 23rd. On the 23rd, I have check number 12, which means a payment was made. Every time I see the word check, it means it's cash payments journal. Can you see here? For D, it's CPJ. Right. Now they gave me the amount of 500 rand. I need to calculate what amount goes in under E. So basically I will take 8,500 less 500. That is going to give me 8,000 rand. Let's double check that. I go to 8,500 minus 8,000 rand. That gives me 500 rand. Can you see that here? Okay. So on the 27th learners, for F, that because I have CJ here, I've got to have invoice number four. Can you see invoice number there? Under A, invoice number, is the same repeated transaction here. Okay, so it's invoice number 40, CJ. For this, I have to calculate the amount of, uh, the amount for G. So how do I arrive at G? I've got 500 Rand here and I've got 5,000 Rand here. So what do I have to do to arrive at G? Basically, I take 5,000 less 500. That will give me 4,500. So G has 4,500 Rand. Can you see that, learners? So learners, I have provided you a blank copy in your resource pack, I would like for you to complete this creditor's ledger and practice on it. A similar example will and may appear in your exams for finals. Okay, so happy studying for now learners. I will return to you soon with lesson number 13. Thank you. Take care.